Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. While cleanup continues because of us getting hit pretty hard by Hurricane Barrel, my video today, I want to focus on the positives in our gardens that the pollinators are really depending on. And as you can see here, I've got a bumblebee that is visiting the native Salvia farinacea. My name is Crystal and I garden in Zone 9, south of Houston, fairly close, not super close, but close to the Texas Gulf Coast. And we have heat, high heat, high humidity, heavy clay soil, and typically lots of rain. So what type of plants do really, really well in that type of condition? And of course, we just went through a hurricane and it pummeled our gardens. And while that is sad, and there are certainly tears that happen. Life continues, plants are pretty resilient, and it even becomes more paramount and just more in your face how important it is to grow things that do really well in the area. So what you're seeing here is my fire bush. And fire bush, I've got three back here. I've got two large leaf, one over there, and then the small leaf in the middle and you can see it is blooming beautifully and pollinators of all sorts love this from hummingbirds to butterflies to the native bees. And it is just performing like a trooper. Thank goodness <laughs> for my fire bush. It's very um, cold sensitive. So when it freezes, it does die to the ground. But this growth is what has come back from the ground and by, oh golly, another couple of months, it'll be above the fence. And so it flowers and flowers and produces berries for the birds, flowers, nectar for all the pollinators. And it just, in our heat and humidity, is such a trooper. Another thing that I mentioned that does really well is the Salvia farinacea. I've got both the purple variety and then the white blooms and this is a native and it just you know it, it's flopped over because of the hurricane and it's certainly the hurricane certainly made a lot of my plants flop over but that doesn't stop the pollinators from visiting the flowers and so I'm not going to cut this back because I don't have tons of flowers right now for the butterflies and so I'm trying to preserve what I have and then of course I planted this up in a planter this is my pentas and they are just gorgeous so I have pentas and then a bloomified lantana and I just I love this pot it's it brings it makes me smile when I see it among some of my other things that aren't so happy I do want to show you, I have a Miss Molly butterfly bush here that was doing okay, but it certainly did not like the hurricane and it absolutely hated the rains that we got afterwards. So, you know, it is in a container. I do have it above ground, so it does get pretty good drainage, but you know, butterfly bushes just do not do well for me down here. Of course, my giant milkweed are doing great. I've had monarchs here visiting, and so there isn't a whole lot for them, but they are visiting the giant milkweed. And then, let me turn, and this is the time of the year so this is in the summer in the nice heat where the pride of Barbados starts to flower and this is visited by 
by pollinators, all different types of pollinators alike. And I really like this bloom. I think it's really interesting. It's showy. You can see it across the yard. And I'm very happy that it started to flower for me because we need it. All right, on to the next part of the garden. In my last video, I mentioned that the coral honeysuckle came through. All my vines actually came through really well. And I'm so happy to see my newest vine back here was somewhat protected and it has been able to start flowering. And I'm really happy to see this because this is getting visited um, by pollinators. So even though my paniculata flocks were laying down, they weren't broken. And so I did stake them up. <laughs> Look at the little anole here. Ugh. They are opportunists. He's trying to get some butterflies. I propped them up with bamboo sticks and the pipevine swallowtail butterflies have been all over them. I've got a, I love how much they are flowering. Certainly the hurricane dealt a blow, but they are doing fairly well and <laughs> I'm happy to have them because my Tithonia got blown to smithereens. And so this is one of the plants that the pollinators are enjoying. My Rose of Sharon back here is also flowering. And this is a hit, although it did get hit by the hurricane and it has been laying down. The flowers are visited by pollinators all sorts of pollinators love this hibiscus it is a rose of sharon it is an indeterminate type so it has buds all along and as you can see here i need to get out and get some of these flowers picked up that are spent but this is visited i need to figure out how to prop this up somewhat because Unfortunately, it also got blown and it's flowering beautifully right now and I would love to have the flowers up so they're easily accessible. All right, the workhorse in the yard so far has been my different colored porter weeds and thank goodness for them because they do fill, refill with nectar as I have mentioned they refill all throughout the day and so pollinators can come oops as I'm working hands are getting dirty here the pollinators come and they visit these flowers and so I've been making sure that these are available I'm babying them if you will making sure that they're not you know they got hit pretty hard in the hurricane also but they're they're producing so that's wonderful so the salvia got hit really hard and i had to come in and start cutting some of this down i left the things that are still standing upright and allowing them to bloom just because of the scarcity of blooms in the yard the hurricane winds stripped a lot of the blooms from a lot of plants. Salvia is particularly susceptible to really high winds and we had 80 to 90 mile an hour winds here so they um, did not appreciate that. But my native my native bush is you know came through it somewhat like a champ and this is the flame acanthus it's being visited because of the popularity of the blooms i wish it was blooming a little bit more but what it's blooming i'm very thankful 
<laughs> my hot lips. Whew. Everything, you know, it's weird how the winds work and it laid out my hot lips in my container and it is all off to one side. You know, they get rerouted and even though you prop them up like I did with this porter weed, we have it propped up with a tripod support here of bamboo it still has rerouted the <laughs> the stems and it's amazing how it can do that what wind can actually do and so it's heavy over here and I was going to just prune it up because I don't like how it's looking but you know the pollinators need these flowers and there's not tons of flowers it's still recovering so I am not going to prune up some of these plants yet. What are your thoughts? You know, there's one thing of form and there's another thing of function. And I like things to look very nice. But I'm also very cognizant now of life trying to rebound after our hurricane. In my last video, I mentioned how wonderful our vines did. <laughs> I'm so happy with our trellised vines. And they're just doing stellar even in this aftermath of the hurricane. It's like it didn't even bother them. Our cardinal climber vines are looking fantastic compared to last year. Last year in the 100 degree temperatures where we had drought and we had 100 degrees for multiple days in a row, they were just not performing well. You could tell they were struggling even though they were had supplemental water. This year they're doing beautifully. And so again, you know, on the trellises, we have them staked with the, the cattle poles. With this level one hurricane, every single trellis held up just beautifully. Love it. As I've mentioned, and you know on my channel, I really love this Bloomify series of Lantana. And my Lantana here on the end really took a beating and the hurricane pretty much knocked a good portion of it out and down but when I look inside look at all of this new growth that's coming and so I'm so happy to see that because it is going to rebound also and come back beautifully this one took the brunt of the wind. This one over here, not as much. And so it still has somewhat of its mounding habit. Okay, I want to show you and come over to my kufia. This has been such a wonderful plant now in the aftermath of this hurricane. And as you can see, I've got a one of the native bees here was coming at the at the blooms it is just not missing a beat flowering and there's so many abundant flowers that this has been oh there's a honey bee this has been a hit in the yard in the absence of some of the other blooms that i typically have and so Interestingly, this did well in the hurricane. Actually, all of my kufia did well. In my new garden bed, what's being visited a lot is the porter weed, although it was completely blown over. It took the brunt of some of this wind. I've got it propped up as much as I can with some stakes and it's blooming into my hot lips 
and I am letting it go because again, blooms are needed in the pollinator garden in the heat of the summer. So one of the areas that looks really poorly <laughs> is my tithonia area. And I have a few tithonia that are blooming. And so I am very carefully coming out daily and pruning back because I don't like the look and I want new tithonia to be able to start to grow. But I do have some flowers. And since I do have some flowers and they are being visited, I am not cutting those down until they give out, if you will. And so um, I don't like the look of this, but since the butterflies especially are visiting this terrible patch <laughs> that's left, um, Tithonia do not do well in hurricanes. Just look at this cardinal climber vine. I grow these from seed every year and it's just massively filling out. I love this vine. Oh, it's just beautiful again this year. Another flower that my pollinators have been really depending on are the hibiscus. These are my tropical hibiscus. They came through the hurricane like a champ. And when my garden produces the variety that it produces of blooms, they don't necessarily come to these flowers readily. They're not something that they flock to but they're certainly coming to them more and I have had all of the hibiscus bloom and I see pollinators on them all the time now. The other thing that they will come to is the terenia or wishbone flower. Unfortunately my terenia did take a, a pretty good beating. I had them protected underneath the tree but unfortunately they're not blooming as readily because of the hurricane. But the few blooms that we do have, they are visiting. In my north bed, the mystic spires, salvia did not do well in the hurricane and it flattened and laid out a lot of the blooms. I've propped up what I've what I can without breaking the branches and the pollinators are visiting these. And my Henry Dulberg, Salvia Farinacea, one of the natives to Texas is actually doing really, really well. I'm really happy it didn't get laid out like the one right next to it, which is the Mystic Spires. And as you can see, I have some holes because of losses in the hurricane. My fennel is finishing up. I had lots and lots of caterpillars and we've got a lot of chrysalises in the yard. So I'm very hopeful that we will have butterflies again soon. The native milkweed is getting ready to flower again. Love it. These are visited, visited by all different types of pollinators. And then I have a little bit of Greg's mist flower that is flowering. My blue butterfly clerodendron is doing its part and it has been flowering. I've been so appreciative. I have lots of different ends that have been flowering here and I'm really happy because a lot of the pollinators are coming over here and visiting this plant. And as you know, I absolutely loved my shade bed 
and my shade bed is a hot mess. So sad. My coleus have all been blown down and they're blown out. They're not broken. Some of them are. Some of them clearly have been broken off. Um, they've been rotated in the ground because of the wind and I'm not really sure and partially pulled up and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do to rectify this because it is it's so sad. The other one that I really feel bad about is my gorgeous stand of salvia. And this is the salvia madrensis. What we're trying to do is create a lattice work of support to support these guys. These are a pretty important pollinator draw for me and the pollinators in the fall. I'm going to go in the back. So all of the salvia is pretty much, was pretty much laying down. They can't take hurricane force winds. And so we've got one more set of lattices to try to pull up this row. But I'm encouraged to see what this is doing and how it's looking. And they're surviving. So that's really good news. And look at this. I just had an eastern black swallowtail emerge from its chrysalis. It just has emerged. I don't know if you saw it expel some of the fluids, some of its contents of its abdomen. It does that when they just emerge. So he has just come out. I'm not gonna get any closer physically, but I am going to zoom in. Aren't they gorgeous? Huh. So he survived the hurricane need to name that one Barrel. You know, some of my coleus is just starting to bloom and I typically pull the bloom heads off, pinch them off, because it's too early for them to flower. I don't know if I'm going to do that though. They're a mess anyway and the pollinators need them. So I haven't decided. Kind of back to where I started this video. And I hope you all are doing well. Those of you that went through Hurricane Barrel, I want to encourage you, keep your chins up. Gardens may not look the greatest, but boy, the pollinators are still depending on what you've got. So do as best you can with what you have, and they'll so appreciate you for that. Those of you that weren't in Hurricane Barrel and are in the throes of some of this heat, I hope your gardens are doing well. And I thank you for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful day.